I'm going to show you and prove to you that the Israelites are black, were always black, always will be black. You see Nathaniel, yeah, he a prophet sent back to the earth, back to the earth. He sent you to wake up the people and tell them, come out of the church, come out of the church. Be ready for war, as soon as they run get out of the dirt, out of the dirt, hey. Shout out, why? shout out, why? shout out, why? toes down. Shout out, why? shout out, why? shout out, why? toes down. Got the juice, I ain't talking no blue late, cause he's walking the light of a new day. I can't listen to nothing a fool say, thank the Lord that he showed us a new way. Shout out, why? shout out, why? shout out, why? toes down. Shout out, why? shout out, why? shout out, why? Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ, Blessed, Deacon Abiel here. We are here in Kumasi, Ghana, and I am completely blown away. As you can see behind me, we have the new school that's in construction. It's being built from the ground up. Everybody's putting their brick in, y'all. It's your turn. Donate, donate, donate. As you can see where your money go, we're not pocketing your money, we're not driving expensive cars. We are doing the work Most High God put in our heart to do, just like in the book of Nehemiah. You guys out there in all the countries watching, you've been the key to this taking place. Without your donations and your help, we wouldn't be where we're at now. You understand? The Lord says, as you know in Ezekiel, build sanctuaries. This is the first of many Lord's world that we're building. Put your brick in. We need your donations. We need your help. As you all see, this right here is fulfillment of prophecy. The scripture says that this gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached unto the whole world as a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. What you see right here is fulfillment of prophecy. Put your brick in, twiddle your thumbs. Those of you all that's not here, ain't boots on the ground, you have a way to help. Shalom brothers, shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is. That's right, it is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I love to read your shout out letters and uh, letters uh, and your shout out donations, excuse me. But before I do that, I often love it to cover a little bit of history. So what I want you to do is, is get your Bibles, your pens, well, get your notebooks and pens first, but get your Bibles first and foremost. And let's take a quick look into our history. I want you to pay very close attention. Now, here's a book I came across in a bookstore called The Israelites. Now, at first glance, you wouldn't think about picking this book up because on the cover, of course, you have Caucasian Europeans portraying as Moses and the Israelites. The Emergence of Man, the Israelites, by the editors of Time Life Books. So this was published by Time Life Books. When you go inside the book to page 51, I want you to take a look. Let's see who, the, who this is. Painted in the third century AD, this fresco more than four feet high dramatizes let me zoom in on that so we can all see it. Painted in the third century AD, this fresco more than four feet high dramatizes a traditional view of Moses. God, get God, Moses is God given powers. Miraculously creating a well in the desert, he provides water for the 12 tribesmen who, exhausted by the flight from Egypt, had lost confidence that he would save them. This work was discovered on the wall of a synagogue in Dura Europis, an ancient city on the Euphrates River in Syria. So let's take a look at Moses. What do y'all see? A black man. There's a seven branch menorah. There's no eight branch or nine branch, it's seven branch. And those are the, the uh, fathers, the elders, the judges of Israel. Black. Look at the legs, look at their feet of Moses, black. Now you might say that ain't good enough for me. During the exodus from Egypt, Moses carries out the orders of his God, symbolized by the hands at the top of this 244 AD fresco. At left, 
He leads the oppressed Israelites across the Red Sea, just drained by divine intervention, so that the remaining shallows teem with jumping brown fish. Lined up behind the vanguard of troops are the elders of the, of the traditional 12 Israelite tribes. At right, a second image of Moses appears in the act of flooding the Red Sea again. Now that the Israelites are safe in the desert, thereby engulfing the Egyptians who pursued them. The four foot high fresco, only a portion of which is reproduced here, was found in the ruins of a synagogue at the Syrian city of Dura Europa by a British patrol during World War I. The picture had unwillingly been preserved by the city's inhabitants. In 256 AD, the temple was located close to the town walls in a last effort at defense against an advancing army. Let's take a look at Moses. What do y'all see? What do you see? He sure don't look like Charlton Heston to me. Look at the hand of God right there. There's Moses here again. There's the hand of God leading the Israelites again. All black men, black people. There's the fish. Here's the Egyptians getting drowned. These are, Moses is a black man. The Israelites were black. So I don't know what you churches are, put, are portraying. The lies you're pushing, you're being proven wrong. A tribute for the Negro. By Wilson Armistead. Let's see when this was published. A tribute for the Negro. Being a vindication. Now see the year? 1848. So let's go inside the book and see what it says about the Negro. All right. Top left, it says the Jews. Now I want to jump down. The Jews. Next sentence reads, descended from one stock and prohibited by the most sacred institutions from intermarrying with the people of other nations and yet dispersed according to the divine prediction as Deuteronomy 28, 64, into every country on the globe through slavery. This one people is marked with the colors of all. Fair in Britain, who well, once fair in Britain are converts, and Germany converts in the later years, brown in France and in Turkey, swarthy, that means black in Portugal and in Spain, olive in Syria. The word olive, olives only come in three colors. Black, brown, or green. Now, there's no green people. So they're saying brown or black in Syria and in Chaldea. Chaldea. Tawny or copper color in Arabia and in Egypt, whilst they are black at Congo in Africa. Let's go over. I want to underline section. A remarkable fact in the history of Loango and the empire of Congo is that the country, according to a statement, statement, which was fully credited by Oldendorp, himself a writer of most correct judgment and of unimpeachable veracity, contains many Jews settled in it. See, there were many black Jews settled in the Congo. That's not taught in school. Okay, um, contains many Jews settled in it who retain their religious rights and distinct habits, which keep them isolated from other nations. Though thus from the African population, they are black and resemble the other Negroes in every respect as to physical character. It is probably an allusion to this case that Pennington in his textbook says, the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea settled on the coast of Africa are black. Fact. That's not taught in schools. That's not in taught in churches. Your churches are garbage. All of them. Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. Waits says an interesting gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, says Pritchard. 
the Duchess of Diabrantes, wife of Napoleon's ambassador to Portugal, said that the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. So dark were the Jews, especially of Portugal and southern Spain, that many whites thought all Jews were black or dark. Fact. Now I'm going into this book to show you the evil that the Christian church did to the Israelites during these days. 14, New World Jewry, 1493 to 1825, Requiem for the Forgotten by Seymour B. Liebman. Y'all think Christianity is of God. Y'all stupid as hell. These so-called Christians whipped us, beat us, burned us alive. All right, I'm on page 31. The edict stated, among other things, that bestowing a Hebrew name on a newborn child was an indication of being a Jew. Now I'm just jumping down, but I'm showing the, the various things that how the church determined who was keeping God's laws or not. Those that were keeping God's laws suffered. Look at the bottom. It will serve as an example to the recently converted Indians and strike terror into the Hebrews. You had so-called Indians in this new world that were keeping God's commandments. They don't teach you that in school. Look at that first sentence right there. Look at that first sentence. Oh, how evil is the tribunal of the holy office. If not for it, I could count the Christians in this kingdom on my own fingers. See, our people always considered the Christian church evil. Oh, how evil is the tribunal of the holy office. Turn the page. I'm going to start at although. Although the Jews maintain their religious observances secretly, it is clear that many of their Christian neighbors were aware of the religious identity of the secret Jews. Yet few Christians appear in the list of witnesses in the trials of Jews. Those who do appear are an occasional slave or com commercial competitor. Many slaves are referred to as Ladino. In this context, Ladino means a Negro slave who could speak Spanish understandably. That's what they call the Jews that they put in slavery in Spain, Ladinos. Pay close attention. Pay close attention. Subsequent, subsequently, he went to Loanda, Angola, a Portuguese colony in Africa. He stated at his trial that during his travels, he observed all Jewish days of fasting and learned the locations of all the Jewish communities in Europe, Africa, and the New World. The New World is the Americas. He finally settled in Veracruz. He and his wife were convicted in 1647 of being judío, observante de la ley de Moisés. Translated means a Jew and observer of the law of Moses. She, being his wife, received 100 lashes and he 200. Both were sentenced to perpetual prison. Prisoners usually served only two or three years when sentenced to perpetual prison. Page 183. So let's talk about the Caucasian Jews, the Khazars. Trading and serving as merchants included owning warehouses with inventories to outfit the largest sailing vessels and to make ship repairs. The Jews were the largest ship chandlers in the entire Caribbean region, where the shipping business was mainly a Jewish enterprise. Y'all see that? The ships, I'm right here. The ships were not only owned by Jews, but manned by Jewish crews and sailed under the command of Jewish captains. Many of the ships were engaged in bringing slaves from Africa to the 13 colonies, the British islands in the Caribbean and the Spanish colonies. The Jews spread through most of the West India islands, French, English, and Spanish, as well as Dutch. So it's telling you that these Caucasian Jews that you Christians love so much, not only did they make the ships and own the ships, 
They sold the slaves and had slaves. Y'all seen this book before, The Negroes and the Jews. Lenore E. Burson. Go to page 212. The land of Israel is located in Western Asia and borders on North Africa. All of the native inhabitants of that region were non-white. When Spain expelled his Jews in 1492, many of them, the Jews, went to Africa. It seems probable that some of them were brought later to America as slaves. The spirituals never sing of African rivers. It's always the Jordan or the Red Sea. They don't sing about African chiefs or kings. It's David or Moses or some other Jewish character from the Bible. So that's, I'm showing you all this because you need to make a distinction when you read about the Jews. You had black Jews, the original Jews, the original Hebrews. Then you had converts, which are these Caucasians today, who own Jew, who own slaves, sold slaves, bought slaves and owned slave ships and who live in Israel today. These 15th century manuscripts, sometimes, you know, it's uh, amazing that, you know, people in the 15th century, were they, uh, you know, aware of color? All the saints, even the virgin, is painted black, you know? Today, even today, we don't, have, we don't find such paintings in churches, in not always, you know, a bright color, not black color. So, uh, it has to be studied very, very well, you know? this type of documents. Look, even the evangelist, this is Matthew, you know, and the harag or the decorations, all this, you know, and as I told you at the beginning, a piece of cloth to cover, it is cotton, cotton made, huh? this is, you know, homemade cloth, so they protect it not to be destroyed. A biblical and theological dictionary explanatory of the history manners and customs of the Jews and neighboring nations. Let's see when this was published. What does that say? Eighteen fifty seven. Now let's look up preaching, since the Christians got so much to say about how the Israelites preach. Let's take a look and see what this dictionary says. Okay, here's the word preaching. So I'm gonna move over to the highlighted area regarding what the scholars of this time in 1857 understood about the preaching of the Israelites. Some of them opened schools or houses of instruction and there too, their disciples, they taught the pure religion of Moses, talking about the law, the commandments. At Naoith, in the suburbs of Ramah, there was one where Samuel dwelt, and there was one at Jericho, in the third at Bethel, to which Elijah and Elisha often resorted. Thither the people went on Sabbath days and at new moons, and received public lessons of piety and morality. 1 Samuel 19, verse 18, 2 Kings 2, verse 2 and 5, chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Through all this period, however, there was a dismal confusion of the youthful ordinance of public preaching. Let's go there. And at other seasons, again, itinerants, both princes, priests, Levites, were sent through all the country to carry the book of the law and to teach in the cities. See that? Let's go down. Y'all can read the rest on your own. Many of the discourses were preached in camps. You see how some of these Israelites say they hate camps? Let's read that again. Many of the discourses were preached in camps and courts, in streets, schools, cities, villages, sometimes with great composure and coolness, at other times with vehement action and rapturous energy, sometimes in a plain blunt style, at other times in all the magnificent pomp of Eastern allegory. On some occasions, the preachers appeared in public with visible signs. 
You hear so many people say, oh, I hate the 12 tribes sign based on us. Uh, they got it from Ezekiel 37. We ain't supposed to do that. That's what our forefathers did. That's what our forefathers did. The preachers appeared in public with visible signs, with implements of war, with yokes of slavery, or sometimes adapted to their subject. They gave lectures on these, held them up to view, girded them on, broke them in pieces, rent their garments, rolled in the dust, and endeavored by all the... Let's see what the next part... By all the methods they could devise, is that word? Agreeably to the customs of their country, to impress the minds of their auditors with the nature and importance of their doctrines. Let's turn the page. Let's turn the page. All right. The apostles being dead, because they were killed, everything came to pass as they had foretold. The whole Christian system in time underwent a miserable change. Preaching shared the fate of other institutions and the glory of the primitive church gradually degenerated. Those writers whom we call the fathers, however, held up to view by some as models for imitation. Let's read that again. Those writers whom we call the fathers, however held up to view by some as models for imitation, do not deserve that indiscriminate praise ascribed to them. Christianity, it is true, is found in their writings, but how sadly incorporated with pagan philosophy and Jewish allegory. The fathers they're talking about, these people call like Martin Luther, okay? Those, what they call the church fathers. So it's saying that they have incorporated in their writings pagan philosophy and Jewish lies, Jewish symbolism. Now we're in Isaiah, the 13th chapter. We're going to read verse 1 and 2. Because we have this understanding and we go out on the street and teach this understanding. Watch. Isaiah 13, verse 1 reads, The burden of Babylon. That Babylon is Babylon, a great which is the United States of America, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see, verse 2. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. The banner is the Bible. The high mountain is Babylon the Great. It says, it reads, exalt the voice unto them, meaning lift up your voice. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. So we're supposed to exalt our voices unto the people that surround us listening and shake the hand. When you shake the hand, you're rebuking and correcting. See, many of you Christians and some of you individual Israelites, you despise that. You hate that. Isaiah 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So we're supposed to cry aloud on the streets and not spare your feelings. We're supposed to lift up our voice like a trumpet and show my people, the Israelites, their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. But you Christians don't like that. Your ministers don't apply that because they don't know the Bible, because they don't know the scriptures. And you get offended at this. That's why a lot of you are going to die. I'm in Ezekiel 37, verse 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah, and for the children of Israel, his companions, that's Benjamin and Levi. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. So that's Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Issachar, Naphtali, Simeon, so forth and so on. Verse 17. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. This is also explaining Romans, the 11th chapter. Verse 18, watch, here's the point. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Meaning, they see the two sticks joined together, these two pieces of wood joined together, with the names of the twelve tribes of Israel written together. And they ask us, hey, why y'all got all these people together on this sign? And we explain to them, 
Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel with his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. So the prophets are prophet, uh, told prophetically to go on the street with these sticks joined together with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel in it. And you Negroes, you evil Christian and individualized, hate that thing, despise that thing. But guess what? We don't give a damn what you think or how you feel. We're going to do what the Bible says. And remember, remember, 1857 dictionary said the Israelite preachers went out on the streets with signs and things of that nature. Woo! All praises. What I want you all to understand and find very interesting is that that dictionary was published in the 1800s. I just got that dictionary. But for years, my elders have taught me that when we go out teaching to have camp signs and things of that nature, just like the dictionary said the Israelites did when they went out teaching. We didn't have that dictionary, so we didn't copy from the dictionary. And you Christians and some of you dumb individualites complain about us raising our voice and having signs. You are stupid. That's what y'all y'all don't believe in the Bible. Y'all don't believe in the Bible at all. You are playing games with God and you're going to come up short, my man, my sister. Shalom. All right. You saw it for yourself. You saw it for yourself. I hope you took good notes. Okay, listen, listen. <clears throat> a lot of things going on in the world. A lot of things going on. Uh, the, G20, the G20 just had their COP summit. COP stands for Conference of the Parties. Okay. COP26, wherein they discuss climate change. Okay, and what I'm going to show you, you're not going to see on CNN, ABC, NBC, PBS, MSNBC. I had to find this on the Vatican's news channel and what they discussed with Joe Biden was not put on Western media. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a look at it. Pay close attention. I try now. I know they were speaking with an accent, and the Pope doesn't speak English, so there was an interpreter. <clears throat> so just pay very close attention, and then I'll come back with my commentary. All right, stay tuned. As a pilgrim, a pilgrim in the cause of justice and peace and human solidarity.
The G20 summit is underway in Rome as leaders from the world's major industrialized nations meet. Outgoing German Chancellor Angela Merkel is among the dignitaries who are in the Italian capital for the two-day gathering. Among the topics being discussed is the coronavirus, with emergency work workers invited to join leaders for a photo. Tackling global warming is also top of the agenda, ahead of the COP26 climate conference, which begins on Sunday. Most of those attending the G20 in Rome will travel onward to Glasgow for that key UN climate summit. They are the two most prominent Roman Catholics on the world stage, Pope Francis and U.S. President Joe Biden. The devout Catholic keeps a photograph of the pontiff on his desk at the White House. On Friday, he met with his hero face to face at the Vatican. And uh, you are the most significant warrior for peace I've ever met. For more than an hour, the two leaders spoke privately about climate change, the pandemic, and poverty. The visit is the prequel of two major summits happening this weekend. In Rome, the G20, and in Glasgow, the COP26 Climate Summit. Using the knowledge of science and the wisdom of religion, we must think long term for the sake of the whole of humanity. Now is the time to take transformative action as a common response. Science and technology, One Health Solutions. Faith and science need to address all of this together. We endorse a joint appeal world in about half a century. That must not happen. We must move beyond appealing the measures in our appeal must be enforced. Thank you. The environment cannot be saved without a change in lifestyle, as we know from Laudato Si very well. And the way to a new climate regime is indeed the inability to imagine a different economic system of imagining another economic order, which is possible. So it, the Holy Spirit leads us where God wants us to go and not where we want to go because of our ideas. We must not create another church. We must Make the church different, make, make a different church. Not a new church, but a different church. This is the challenge for a different church, open to the new elements. Let's invoke the Holy Spirit. So, and they're talking about the United States of America. Talking about the United States of America, because when Matthew mentioned it in the Bible, he wasn't talking about the physical ground that he was on. He was talking about something in the distance. So if we are going to have one nation under God, which we must, we have to have one religion, one, one, one nation under God and one religion under God, right? All of us together, working together. I don't Let's take a look at what happened during the time of the Greeks. Uh, in 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41, Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people so you see how i have underlined one people the unification of all nations verse 42 and everyone should leave his laws so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king verse 43 yea many also of the israelites consented to his religion you see i have the word religion underlined that's what the pope was talking about that's what uh, Michael Flynn, who's the former head of the um, National Security, was talking about. One world, one religion. So when you get a chance, read this history about what happened to the Israelites during the time of the Greeks. You'll be shocked and you'll see that history has a way of repeating itself according to the word of God. This is why I stress, brothers and sisters, stop listening to these black Christians. They all fall under the Roman Catholic Church. They work under the Catholic Church. They have made a covenant with death 
and hell and keeping black people, men and women, in the dark. Y'all don't know what's going on behind the scenes, okay? Stop listening to these black Christian pastors. They've all worked with the Pope. Do y'all see what's going on? 20 of the greatest governments on earth is working with science and the church, the Christian church, the Catholic church, and they're creating a new economic system, working towards a new world order. And its main purpose, brothers and sisters, is to destroy the 12 tribes of Israel, you blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians. We're in the very early stages of Jacob's trouble. We must repent as the Israelites and keep the most highest commandments in the faith of Christ. Understand that. All right. This is from uh, the book entitled Behold a Pale White Horse, a memorial edition, the CFR, which stands for Council of Foreign Relations. Like you can see here, the Council on Foreign Relations slash trilateral connection. Remember I told y'all in another video that the entire media was controlled, orchestrated, and run by the Council of Foreign Relations. Look, media, past and present, CFR, TC members. Look, CBS, New York Times, NBC, Time Inc., ABC, Cable News Network, that's CNN, Newsweek, Washington Post, Public Broadcast Service, PBS, Associated Press, UPI, Reuters, Dow Jones and Company, Wall Street Journal, Boston Globe, LA Times, Chronicle, Baltimore Sun, Washington Times, National Review, the New World Order views of Rockefeller Kissinger, uh, that's a Polish name, I can't even read it, and others in the CFR and the TC, Trilateral Connection, in a circle are not shared by all members. Some join for prestige and to further their careers. Some are invited in for window dressing. All Americans should closely examine the disastrous results of foreign and domestic policy formulated and implemented by the CFR through the years without public knowledge. Be warned, brothers and sisters, be warned about these news networks that are hell-bent on controlling how you think and what you think. The media falls under science. It's the mouth of the great red dragon. Its job is to manipulate the public and control the public. Understand, brothers and sisters, please understand what I am trying to say. Fortunately, some members of the media, some members of the media, some members of the media, some, some members, members of the media, media use their, their platforms to, to push, push their, their own, own personal bias, bias. To, to push, push their, their own personal, personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is why Western media sucks. I showed you with verif verified proof. They all work together. They lie, they lie, they lie. I'm talking about Western media, America's media here in the U.S. This is why many times I look outside Western media. I look at media from other countries, European countries, or in this case, I showed you the inside meeting within the Vatican. And in the Vatican, the meeting discussed nothing that they showed on TV here in the United States of America. Total difference. I hope you can see that. Okay. So this was at their COP26 meeting, COP26. It stands for Conference of the Parties, which is their uh, climate change conference for 2021. Okay, now I'm going to show you all that in the Bible. I'm going to show you that in the Bible because their climate change conference is about reducing CO2 emissions. They're saying that the things that have been created is uh, helping the earth to become destroyed or, you know, uh, harming the people on the earth. Now, this is what they're saying, but I'm going to show you that in the Bible too. Just bear with me. What I want to do is... Uh, comment on the things that's occurring that the Pope said, 
that his uh now the, the the first people that spoke before the pope i don't know who they were i don't know their names but you saw, you saw that they talked about the uniting of religions and science and faith uh and government that's what's happening now brothers and sisters where they're all they've always worked together but now it's going to be guess what enforced it's going to be enforced and the, the jab, listen to what I'm about to say, the jab was an experiment to see how much they could enforce things before the public revolts. I hope you all understand what I'm saying. I am the lab science director. I know a thing or two about food science. Now, what they have invented, when I say they, I'm talking about the genetic engineers, not only have they found a way to put these genetically engineered traits into food crops, they've now found a way to cause food crops to grow RNA fragments that can be specifically targeted like bioweapons to interfere with the physiological processes of targeted species that might eat the food. Now this technology is called RNA interference technology. It's relatively new uh, compared to GMOs, relatively new. It's being touted now as a technology to eliminate the use of pesticides because what they're saying is they can cause a corn crop to grow RNA fragments that will kill the insects that eat the corn without having to use pesticides like toxic chemicals that overload the insect nervous system and kill it from a nervous system breakdown and so on. This RNA interference technology is a pesticide technology but it doesn't rely on pesticide chemicals. It relies on RNA fragments in the food. Now, what's disturbing about this is that this technology can be fine-tuned to target a specific race of humans who eat the food. I want you to follow me very carefully on this because most people have never heard of this before. They've never heard of this technology. They don't know it can be targeted by race. Food crops can be engineered right now based on existing technology to cause infertility in black people alone. That technology is a reality. It's actually, it's widely covered out there in the mainstream media, in the science media, RNA interference technology is widely covered. The government is at war with you. If you're, if you're black and you're watching this, the government is at war with you and they want you to exterminate it and they control the science funding, which means there will never be money for any genetic science of the food supply to uncover this truth if it were there. It would be covered up like everything else has been covered up this entire time. Just like the Tuskegee experiments covered things up in the 1930s. Nothing has changed except the technology is more advanced. The covert technology is more covert. The number of vectors through which they can kill you and cause you to have no children, cause you to have spontaneous abortions, the number of vectors is increasing. You are being targeted. And like I said earlier, to some extent we're all being targeted. But black people are being targeted more than anyone else. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter, and I'm going to start at verse 9. Y'all follow along. Matthew 24, verse 9. Listen good. This is how bad it's going to get, okay? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, I've been showing you things that occurred in Spain during the time of the Spanish Inquisition where they afflicted those Israelites, those black Jews that were keeping God's commandments and many had the faith of Christ, okay? What occurred in Spain under the Spanish Inquisition is very similar to what occurred during the time of the Greeks. When you read 1 Maccabees, the first chapter, understand, understand, what understand. It's also what occurred during the time of Rome, when Rome, during 70 AD, when Rome began to enslave and afflict the Israelites. Now, you might have thought those days were long gone. But what Christ is saying is future tense. Watch. Now, you may say, well, 70 AD is future tense. Yes, it was. But guess what? 
Christ's words goes beyond that. I'm going to show you that. Watch this again. Let's read it again. Matthew 24, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, watch this. You may say, well, that was only in 70 AD. When you go to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17, the Bible uses the analogy of the dragon in reference to the Caucasians. Watch what it says, Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. When you read Jeremiah 6, 22, it compares Zion to a beautiful and comely woman. Okay, let's read it again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, this was after 70 AD this was written because John compiled this around 96 AD. So what was he talking about? He's talking about these latter days. Some may say, but that happened in Spain. Yes, it did happen in Spain and Portugal, but it's also making reference to here, the United States of America and Europe. Look what it says, to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Let's go back to Matthew 24. Watch this. Let's read it again. Matthew 24, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Wow. Wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the same thing that Paul wrote about prophetically in, bear with me. 1 Timothy chapter 3, bear with me a second, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's start at verse 1. This know also that in the last days, let's highlight that, last days, perilous times shall come, underline that, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. We're seeing this all take place now without natural affection. Truth breakers, false accusers, that means liars, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Now, you, what does that mean, despisers of those that are good? Despisers of those that keep God's commandments. Verse 4, traitors, heady, High-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, meaning they will have a form of religion, but denying the power thereof. They won't keep the commandments from such turn away. Let's, read, let's go back to Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and verse 10 again. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Verse 11, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. This is that religious system. Verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now that verse right there, verse 12, we always read that and we keep, we just read by it. But I want to pause there at verse 12. And because iniquity, give me another word for iniquity is sin. What does sin mean? Well, when you go to 1 John, let's go there real quick, because I know some of you are new. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. It says, Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Whose law? God's law. So when we go back to Matthew 24 and verse 12, and because iniquity, meaning sin, shall abound. What does that mean, abound? It's going to escalate like you've never seen before. It says the love of many shall wax cold. And that goes with what we just read in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 4. So how would this system, this new system that's coming regarding the church and state working together, 
How would they cause iniquity to abound? Hmm. Well, let's go to Psalms 94, verse 20. This is how. This is how they do it. <laughs> Psalms 94. Y'all bear with me. Psalms 94 and verse 20. It reads, Shall the throne of iniquity, oh, oh, the throne of iniquity is the United States of America, okay? Because a throne represents a kingdom. Shall the kingdom of iniquity, the throne of iniquity, have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by law? What does it mean, which frameth mischief by law, which frames sin? Another terminology for mischief is sin, which frames sin by a law, meaning they will make laws to justify sin. You go, oh, no, they can't do that. They can't, they've already done it. They've started to do it already. Have you forgotten the laws of abortion? Only Texas rebelled against that right thus far. They have laws allowing black women, not just black women, but women to murder babies. They have laws set up where you cannot speak against same-sex relationships. You can't deny same-sex relations. You can't get into a fight and call a same-sex person a name or you, go, you get an additional five years imprisonment. Y'all sleep in these churches. Some of you Israelites asleep too. That's why I don't mess with a lot of you. You sleep. You're amongst us playing games. So let's read that again, Psalms 94 and 20. Shall the throne of iniquity, meaning the throne of sin, have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law, which establishes or creates sin by a law? Verse 21, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. I want you to understand it. I want you to see that. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. You know, in several, in, in, in about, I believe about 84 countries, they have a anti-blasphemy law, which you, means you cannot speak against other religions. I remember when we were in London several years ago, and we were warned by the police saying you cannot speak against other religions or nationalities. We were reading Deuteronomy 28 explaining sl slavery. Let's talk about that. Y'all remember when, la uh, when Trump was in office and people were tearing down the statues which glorified racist, genocidal maniacs. And everybody, especially you black people, going, yeah, tear it down, tear it down. And you had white people going, yeah, tear it down, tear it down. And everybody was happy, ha happy for a moment. But then that same energy went into the school system because that was their agenda. That same energy of pulling down racist agendas went into the school system. And they said, you're not allowed to teach critical race theory. What does that mean? You can't teach anything about slavery because it makes Caucasian children feel bad. No, no, that's not right. But wait, 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 wait. Didn't we agree with you to tear down racist statues throughout Virginia and Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina? If we were with you with that, surely you must stand with us inside the school system in tearing down CRT, critical race theory, which makes little Caucasian children feel bad about slavery. So that must stop being taught in the school. All that is an agenda so that when we Israelites bring up the Bible, people go, slavery, what are you talking about? We were never taught that. See, y'all don't, see, see, don't understand how deep the white man's thoughts go. Okay? Y'all don't understand. You don't, you don't stand back to Matthew 24 and 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Now, let's go to 2nd Ezra chapter 13. In the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra chapter 13. Y'all bear with me. 
Second Esdras, Second Esdras 13, verse 18. Now I underst now understand I the things that are laid up in the latter days. Highlight that latter days, which shall happen unto them and to those that are left behind, meaning those that were not killed during the time of tribulation. Verse 19, therefore are they come into great perils and many necessities, like as these dreams declare. You see that part right there, verse 19? Therefore they come into great perils. Didn't Paul say in 2 Timothy 3 that in the last days perilous times shall come? He's talking about the same thing. Okay, verse 20. Yet it is easier for him that is in danger to come into these things than to pass away as a cloud out of the world, meaning to die, and not to see the things that happen in the last days. So there's a remnant that's going to see the things. They're going to live through much tribulation. And he answered unto me and said, the interpretation of the vision shall I show thee, and I will open unto thee the thing that thou hast required. Whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind, that's those that live through to the end, this is the interpretation. He that shall endure the perils in that time hath kept himself. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith toward the Almighty. You see that part right there? He that, sh he that shall endure the peril in that time, meaning you live through it, hath kept himself. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works, meaning keeping the commandments, and faith toward the Almighty. That's Revelation 14, 12. Let's get it. Let's get it right there. See, that's why it says precept must be upon precept. Revelation 14, 12 reads, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they, are they that keep the commandments of God. That's the works. And the faith of Jesus. That's faith towards the Almighty. Y'all see that? Do you see that? Now, what has this got to do with the climate change? It has everything to do with it. Because they're all working together. Religion, politics, and science. I could go deep more into it, but time is of the essence. Watch this. Revelation. Chapter 11 and verse 18. This is talking about when Christ returns. Watch this. And the nations were angry. See, all, then these nations ain't going to rejoice when Christ come back. <clears throat> and the nations were angry. And thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great. We get in our reward, brothers and sisters. We get in our reward. Watch this. Here's climate change. And should it destroy them which destroy the earth. That's your climate change right there. Climate change is about the destroying of the earth. Okay? So the Lord said he's going to destroy them which destroy the earth with their CO2 emissions, pollutions in throughout the world. Okay? That is is the prophecy. Now, I'll get in more detail on another time, another day. All right, I'm going to go to Revelation 13 to show you how the, how Rome and her Catholic Church work in unison with the Christian Protestant Church. I'm going to go to Revelation 13, verse 3, and if you want to see more details, you can go to Original Royalty and Order, Revelation, a complete breakdown. Um... I did a good or a basic breakdown, I'll say it like that. You can get an original royalty. Um, Revelation 13, let's start at verse 3. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. One of the seven heads was Rome. Okay, you can read about, when you read above, it talks about the beast with seven heads. So one of the heads was Rome. Verse 3 again. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. This is when Rome fell. And his deadly wound was healed. When was Rome's uh, wound healed? During the time of the Renaissance. And all the world wondered after the beast. They wondered by at Rome at, during the time of Renaissance. Verse 4. And they worshipped the dragons. They worshipped Satan, which gave power unto the beast, beast, which gave power unto Rome. 
And they worshiped the beast, Rome, saying, who is like unto the beast, Rome? Who's like Rome? Who was able to make war with him? Why? Because Rome was a major power during the time of the Renaissance. She controlled Spain, Portugal, and many other European countries and lands. Verse five, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. This mouth is their Catholic church. It was the church that set forth the edicts. Remember, it wasn't the king that had the power during the time of Renaissance. It was the church. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Against who? Against God. Against his word. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. 40 and two months equals three and a half years. Metaphorically, that is 350 years. Verse six. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. The church set forth new edicts, new laws. I, I, I tell you, this Catholic church, not just this Christian Catholic church. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. They spoke all against the laws of God to blaspheme his name. They went against his name, his tabernacle. When you read Acts 7, 46, remember Solomon set up the tabernacle. Tabernacle. First Moses, then Solomon. The tabernacle is the house that the Lord had set up, wanted Israel, the Israelites to set up in the land of Israel. So let's read that part again. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. The angels, they set forth artisans like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and many other artists to go throughout the world and paint new Renaissance images. Leonardo chose Caesar Borgia, which was Pope Alexander VI son, as the new image of Jesus or Christ. They chose, Michelangelo chose um, Pope Alexander VI as the image of God. You can see that if you look up the Sistine Chapel, you got the picture of God touching the finger of Adam. That God there is Pope Alexander the Sixth. Okay, in Leonardo's painting of the Last Supper, you got several uh, images of his father Alexander the Sixth in the painting. We got a white long beard, and his sister Lucrezia was as Mary in the painting of the Last Supper that Leonardo did. Okay, so let's read verse six again. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So this also goes with the papal bulls that they set forth because the next verse says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. How so? Rome set forth a papal bull under Pope Nicholas V to enslave the Israelites. They started in Africa and worked their way to the Americas. And don't be fooled by the Protestants. Don't be fooled by them. Remember, when a Protestant said, oh no, we don't accept the Pope as the replacement of Christ, the vicar of Christ. But they held on to all the other teachings, including the enslavement of the Israelites. They continue, the Protestant Christian churches continued the enslavement of the Israelites here in the Americas. Verse seven again, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. They controlled many, many nations. The Critical Review or Annals of Literature by a Society of Gentlemen, volume 57. Let's see when was this published? In London, the year is 17... 83, 1783. Let's go inside the book to page one. Pope Nicholas V in that famous bull, papal bull, by which he granted the unknown world to the Portuguese and Spaniards, expressly permitted and ordered the Christians to reduce all infidels into slavery. You see that? And order zealously executed by both these nations. Both these nations referring to Portugal and Spain. Let's go down. 
Professor Sprangle divides the history of the Negro trade carried on by Christians into two principal periods. The first from 1443 to 1645, and the second from 1645 to the present time, 1783. Remember, this, that's when this book was published. The first period is the time of its increase, during which not only its founders, the Portuguese, but the English, the Dutch, the French, dealt in Negro slave, slaves. See, the church had power, Rome had power over these nations, the English, the Dutch, and the French, which dealt in Negro slaves, though chiefly for the use and consumption of the Spaniards, Spain, and the sugar and tobacco plantations in the Brazils. They already made their way to the Americas. During the latter period, these four nations were obliged to share that trade with the Swedes. Okay. Swedes, the Danes, the Brandenburgs, North Americans. Ah, oh, North Americans. This is when you had the uh, Protestants. And it says, and since 1778, the Protestants were already in North America with the Spaniards. I'm just going to jump down. Where do I want to go? Here, let's show you who they were. King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, that's Africa, which had been discovered in 1471, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews in Lower Gaza, and the Jews in Loango, who are despised even by the very Negroes, are descended. So you had Negroes that did not keep the commandments, and they were taught by the Catholic Church to hate the Jews, the black Jews, which kept God's commandments. That's what's going on here. And you got the same thing today. Examine these black apologetics. Examine them. They got a hatred for those, the black Jews, the Israelites that keep the commandments. The Christians too got a hatred for the Israelites, the black Israelites that keep the commandments. Now I'm going to read the shared beliefs between Roman Catholics and Protestants. And the reason I'm reading this is because Protestant Christians love to lie. They have no fear of lying. And when they say they have no relation to the Catholic Church. Shared beliefs between Roman Catholics and Protestants. Let's jump down to the part where it reads summary of agreements. This is what they this is a brief summary on what they agree on. What evangelicals have in common with Roman Catholics. This includes the great fundamentals of the Christian faith, including a belief in the Trinity. The Trinity is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Three people sitting there in heaven, that's what they believe. The virgin birth. They believe that Mary was a virgin, has always been a virgin. She got impregnated by a spirit. The deity of Christ. The creation and subsequent fall of humanity. That means all humanity was at one time with God and fell from uh, God. Christ's unique atonement, meaning Christ died for all races, all people on the planet. Christ's unique atonement for our sins, the physical resurrection of Christ, meaning he resurrected Easter Sunday. They all believe that. Easter, which is a pagan holiday, bunny rabbit got nothing to do with eggs. Then it says the necessity of God's grace for salvation, meaning what? Because Christ uh, died on a cross, you don't have to keep no commandments, just believe in a white man named Jesus. Oh, that also goes to the deity of Christ. He's white. He's Caucasian. I forgot about that. How can I forget about that? Uh, what else did it say? Oh, the existence of heaven and hell. And when it says hell, meaning there's a, a guy with a pitchfork in the middle of the earth stabbing you when you die if you were bad. The second coming of Christ, meaning the second coming of a white man to save black people. And the verbal inspiration and infallibility of scripture. Remember, it was the Roman Catholic Church that also changed the seventh Sabbath to the first day of the week, Sunday, 
And Protestant Christians all follow that except Seventh-day Adventists. This is ridiculous. They all believe that Jesus, the angels, God is white. And now when they get busted and trapped in a lie with scriptures from the Israelites, they change the lie and say it doesn't matter. Color don't matter. But they hold on to all the other false doctrines of the Catholic Church. Pay your tithes, your 10 percent of your money, of your every check you make, give us 10 percent. Uh, some of them, the glossolalia, and those false holidays, they all celebrate like Christmas and Mother's Day, so forth and so on. Shalom, this is Captain O.C. of the IUIC Booster Club. Today I'm going to show you and tell you how you can join the Booster Club. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to send an email to IUIC dot fundraising at israelunite.org in the body of the email you're going to include your name where you congregate and how long you have been with iuic once you sent this email wait for a response and then you too will be a member of the iuic shalom Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. But right now, let's get into the reading of the shout out letters and donations. Now, I hope many of you know that I am not a generally a conspiracy theorist. I don't follow Alex Jones. I don't base my teachings upon hearsay. If I don't see it for myself or see it in the scripture, I ain't teaching it. I'm not one of those Israelite leaders that follow InfoWars or Alex Jones. I'm not that kind of a guy. Well, anyway, let's get into the reading of the shout out letters. I got a card that says, they say God only, God only gives what you can handle. Apparently, God thinks you are a badass. <laughs> Any lesser man would have given in to the weakness of the flesh, but you continue the work of the Lord. Thank you, Raphael. C.B. Raphael. All praises. Thank you, Raphael. All praises. All right. This one says, Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel, Most High in Christ. Bless you. I'm writing you to thank you personally for your service to the nation of Israel and to the Most High God. I never in my 30 plus years on this earth seen a movement like this, and I have no choice but to believe this is of the Lord. I've been watching Israel United in Christ since 2013. I can recall watching Captain Jan, Captain Joel, Officer Osias and Officer Leon giving lectures and teaching in their schools. Shout out to the brothers. And I remember thinking, man, these brothers are young, but so serious, knowledgeable, fearless. I end up joining another camp, but always tuned in to, to but always tuned in to IUIC. I only walked into the doors of IUIC last year after noticing that this is where I was getting spiritually fed for the most part. And especially after you did the revelation breakdown, I had to show up. I have to admit that the doctrine of water baptism was a stumbling block for me because the camp I was with was heavy on that, almost to the point that it seemed like no other commandment mattered if you don't get in that water. But I got some more in-depth understanding on that by watching Captain Shemaya class, Captain Yashua class, a class that Officer Yadaya, Officer uh, Asa Anav and Officer Juan gave together here in Dallas and your book Understandest Thou What Thou Readest I haven't broke bread communion with IUIC yet out of respect to IUIC because I was still on the fence in between camps but I know I will soon in the coming Sabbath I, I'll continue to pray and fast for your recovery and for you to come back even stronger thank you again and again Barakatha. that means bless you all oh, praise to the Most High God in Christ. Uh, Hebrew name, Raphael. Uh, and yes, I did sign the book 
and it will be being mailed back. Uh, I always talk about water baptism, how John said he baptized in water, but the man coming after him would baptize with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and people ignore that and they run back to John. Uh, and like I always say, I've been, when I was in the Christ, into Christianity, I was baptized in water seven, at least seven times. Uh, and it did nothing for me. But thank you, all praise to the Most High, Lord's will. You wake up and come in full force. All right. This next letter says, Shalom, Bishop. Just wanted to thank you and the leaders of the IOIC for the great work you men of God do week in and week out. May the Most High bless you and all of IOIC. Sincerely, Brother Nehemiah. Thank you, Nehemiah. <clears throat> all praises. All right. This one reads, Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ. Bless and your beautiful family. I pray that the Most High return you back in perfect health. Bishop, the Most High brought me in the truth in March 2017, and I stayed firm in the faith, praying and fasting despite my trials and tribulations. I continued to let my light shine, and now four years later, my Lord repented, and the Most High directed his steps to congregate this past March of 2021. All praise to the leadership classes and counsel I am still enduring. Please pray for us, Bishop, because I, because as we all know, Sirach 2 is real. Sirach 2 is very real, and I, I um, ask that all of you read Sirach 2, and don't look at it in a point of losing, just when it says uh, about our trials being turned to a lower state, it goes far beyond just losing a dollar and a dream. It's to the point of losing one's life. Take Sirach 2 very, very seriously and look at it to the extremest point you can see it. Like when we often talk about trials, tribulations, many times when we explain it, we go as far as losing a job, losing a home, a house, a family, or a wife. But we never use it in the context of death in terms of war, famine, disease. I want us all to start looking at it like that. All right? Let me continue on. I'm praying that the Most High keep me and my Lord in the spirit. Oh, yeah, my Lord was able to attend this past local Passover, IUICDC, and Pentecost, photos attached, and he got very emotional to witness what the Most High is building, especially when he saw you come out. On a Hubert note, <laughs> my Lord says, Lord's will, he will have a chance to meet you and tell you to stop getting on Alicia from the tech team. Ha, ha, ha. We love you dearly, Bishop. Please kiss beloved Mother Shamara for me. I truly miss her as well on Titus 2. All praises, and I see the Passover photo of you and your husband. All praises to the Most High. You sent two photos. All praises. And you know, I'll only show the photos if brothers and sisters request that I show the, the photos you send on video. So if I don't see that written, I don't show the photos. All right. The next card says, hope your day is bright. Your spirits are light. Your heart is happy too. Shalom, Bishop. May you and your family be blessed from Nawet. This says Nawet. N-A-W-E-T-T. All praises. Thank you so, so much. The next one, next card says, Deep inside, God has placed a spirit that refuses to be broken. And we call this hope. All right, let's read this. Shalom, Bishop. I just want you to know that every day my son and myself are growing daily. All praises, all praises. Uh, realizing who we are and living who we are. At this point, no one can tell us anything different. We are from the tribe of Judah as long as this truth is from the tribe of Judah, period. As long as this truth is coming out more and more, my son and I shall walk in it. Bishop, I just love it when you call out the lying pastors. A friend of mine asked me the other day what church I go to now. I told her that I don't go to none of these churches here in uh, what does that say? Brenham, Brenham, LA, I think it says. 
I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. And nowhere else because they don't tell us the truth. And they never have, Bishop. I pray that God continues to keep his healing hands upon you and know that you and your family are in our prayers. Soon, uh, soon, prayerfully, I will be making the call to attend the closest school to Brenshaw. I think this is Brenshaw. I think. I can't tell. Uh, which is Houston. Uh, can't wait. May God's blessings continue to be upon the 12 tribes. Please accept this donation. Uh, benefit and continuing to build the kingdom. Shalom, Osai and Christ. Bless Michael and Rhonda. Thank you, Michael and Rhonda. All praise to the Lord. Thank you so, so much. All right, this next letter reads, Shalom, our beloved Bishop Nathaniel, we lift you in prayer for renewed strength and complete healing. Thank you for the sacrifices you and your family have made to spread the gospel to our people. And closes our donation. Most high in Christ. Bless Isaac and Rebecca. Thank you, Isaac and Rebecca. All praises to the Lord. This next letter reads, Hi, Bishop. My younger brother first told me about the Israelites when visiting me. I didn't take it. I didn't take to it then. He was into another camp, not IUIC. Uh, later, I start looking on YouTube at all the different Israelites. Now, in my heart, I know IUIC is the one for me. I will be 65 years old, February 22nd. My children are all grown out of two marriages. First wife left me for another man. Second wife died. So sorry to hear that. I've been with my fiance about three and a half years now. We are to marry this year soon. All praise her. She is 46 years young. While we live where we live, it is mostly white. Uh, and I can't find the IUIC camp here <laughs> or near. I have sleep apnea real bad and don't like driving very far places. But I want the biblical smoke. I know it's the truth. For months every day, I watch IUIC on YouTube. I want to help focus. I want to help the cause. So here is blankety blank. Bless you, Brother Jesse. Well, Brother Jesse, my advice to you if you can't come every week, come once a month for the Sabbath. And then on the three major holidays, uh, which are Passover, Feast of Tabernacles, and Feast of uh, Weeks. And when you go, when you visit the school once a month, let the brothers know your situation. And that way, when it comes time for the three major holidays, there'll be no issues with, we don't know who you are, or anything like that. The brothers in the camp will know and be aware of you. All right. Next letter is, Shalom Bishop, we love you and, is, and are keeping you in our prayers. Also keeping your lovely wife and family in prayer as well. All praises. There's no signature on this. All right. The next letter reads, Shalom Bishop, Most High in Christ, bless you. I pray all is well with you and your family and pray that the Most High heals you quickly and speedily as well as all my brothers and sisters. I've been having issues with PayPal. I had been sending blankety blank money a month there then, but issues have arised. I'm sending blank for Ghana building fund. Please pray for me, sir, that I keep enduring and I be healed from mm, me having two strokes. Thank you, sir. Yafa. Yes, Yafa. All praise to the Most High. I'll keep you in prayer. And thank you for the donation for the Africa Fund. All praise to the Most High. All right. The next letter reads, Shalom, Bishop, and your family. May the Most High bless you and keep you in excellent health so that you can continue to be the great leader that you are, keeping us in the spirit and that the most high strength and the mighty leadership that you follow, that follows you. We watch videos every day. All of them keep us in the spirit. My Lord loves the street teaching, watching how the prophets deal with so many different spirits, especially those that come against them, the scoffers. They handle each situation very well in the spirit. Uh, most high in Christ bless you, Roosevelt and Albertina W. Camp name Matthew and Joanna. All praise, thank y'all so much. Now, y'all know camp and class are like two 
different things. Although it may be seem the same, it may seem the same, but in camp, when you get to scoffers, you have to deal with those scoffers. Where in class, you don't get the scoffers. Those are men and women who genuinely want to learn. So that's the difference. So definitely pray that the Lord anointed brothers that are in those streets with the Holy Spirit to deal with those scoffers. All right, the next letter reads, is from Mini W. That's at the top, Mini W. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel and leadership. All praise to the Most High. I pray that the Lord continue to bless and strengthen IUIC. Keep bringing out this truth because we so much need it. I've been reading my four scriptures, supposed to be chapters, four chapters a day, not scriptures, four chapters a day, <laughs> and trying to learn the precepts. I know that St. Louis, Missouri has a camp. I live in Illinois. I am looking forward to visiting that camp for more support. Thank you. All praises, many. Yes, read your four chapters a day, and within one year, you will have completed the entire Bible, which includes the Apocrypha. All praise to the Lord. All right. The next letter, wow. This is from Miss Layla of Wisconsin. She has her photo, nice photo, and she has a photo of her dress with fringes and a Bible which has a section for you to take notes in. Book of Obadiah with new notes from class. All praises, all praises. Uh, the letter reads, Shalom Bishop Nathaniel, most high in Christ. Bless. I hope you're feeling better and getting stronger every day. Yes, Lord. I keep you and your family in my prayers, just sending more alms for wherever they are needed. And a note of thanks for the history you provide in the Shout Out Tuesday classes. All praises. Until late January of this year, I was a devout Christian with over 20 years invested. Never knew I had been taught lies until my sister introduced me to this truth and gave me the answer to a burning question. Who are white people in the Bible? Answer, Esau, Edomites. That's right. After viewing several classes and learning our history as Israelites, there is no way I could continue living a false spiritual life. Without learning the history, I may have continued in darkness. Feels great to be awake. All oh, praise, LOL. I'm finally out of pants and into fringes, a name change and relocation to a state with an IUIC class or in my future plans, Lord's willing. Arizona is at the top of my list. Hey, that's what Captain Yashua is. Now, I visited Arizona. It is so hot, so I can't take... One day, this is just a quick story. When I visited, we got out the car. It was so hot, we literally ran to a, 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 a pool of shade. There was like a place of shade. We just stood there and had to walk along the shadows. It was so hot. I never felt, it was hotter than Africa out there. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. All right. She continues, Sister Lala continues. I am now relearning the Bible in its co correct interpretation through IOIC online classes. A new Bible, 1611 KJV, is being marked up and highlighted. In your October 26th Shout Out Tuesday class, Fake Rabbi Explains Obadiah. I noticed that you write precept scriptures next to verses. Yoink! Yes, ma'am. I'm stealing your practice and making it mine as well. Thanks so much. This will help me in my studies. As always, I send my love, appreciation, and thanks to all the soldiers fighting and fighting our daily battles. It's rougher than rough out here, and the brothers never back down. All praise to the Most High for you all. Uh, take care, Lala of Wisconsin. Thank you, Lala. Great, great letter. All praises. This next letter is short. It says, Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. I thank the Most High for IOIC leadership and their families and 12 tribes worldwide. Thank you. Give to the Booster Club. All praise to the Lord. All right. The next letter reads, Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ. Bless you and your family. Grace and peace to you. It's always good to hear your voice on Shout Out Tuesday. All praises. But I must say, I do miss you doing the Sabbath classes. Don't get me wrong. I love all the teaching from all leadership. But I do miss when you do story time. <laughs> all praises. Not only do I receive your message, when you bring it out, but also when you share the message in story time. It keeps me focused on what and what not to do in my marriage. 
the little nuggets you'll be dropping are very helpful. So thank you again. Now as we continue to pray you, pray for your strength in the Lord. Here is our donation of blankety blank to the Booster Club to push this truth throughout the four corners of the world. Now be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We love you, Bishop. Terry and Doris B. Thank you, Terry and Doris B. Thank you so, so much. All right. The next letter reads, Shalom, Bishop. Although we have never met, it's an honor to call you and all the other teachers a friend. Please accept my alms. And with that, I say shalom to my friends till we meet again. Rise as you arise. Shalom. All praises to the Most High. Usually misunderstood Israel. Thank you, usually misunderstood. Lord's will we meet all praises. All right. The next letter is from Mary G. Mary G. Shalom, Bishop. Blessed be the name of our Heavenly Father. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praying and hoping that you are in the best of health. I'm getting there. Uh, Bishop, hope you and your family are doing well also. I'm sending my monthly alms to do with as you see fit. I love you, Bishop. Praying that all is well with you and your family. Your sister in Christ, Mary. Thank you, Mary. All praises, all praises. Thank you so much. The next one is a card. It reads, Dear Bishop Nathaniel and Elders, My husband and I appreciate all that you do. This is a small arms to help you with the Most High's mission. We pray for Bishop's health and strength. Shalom. Uh, Danny and Yolanda W. Thank you, Danny and Yolanda. Thank you so, so much. The next one is in a card. It says, hey there, hi there, hello there. <laughs> Hope things are great there. Oh, this is from Lala. All right. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel, most high in Christ. Bless you. Just sending more alms for use wherever they are needed. Also sending prayers for continued protection against the mosquito bite. Yes, ma'am. Especially for our brothers and sisters in New York who are already feeling the pressure. With love and appreciation, Miss Lala of Wisconsin. Thank you, Sister Lala. All praises to the Lord. Thank you so, so much. All right, the next letter is short. It reads, Shalom, beloved Bishop, most high in Christ. Bless you, sir. Sister Jediah, your daughter, and you have a new phone number. I'll definitely have Deacon Asaf reach out to you for me. The next one is a short card from Laura M., Shalom, Bishop of Zion Christ. Bless his my donation for the Booster Club. Arms to go all over the world. And I did want to say this. Remember, do not make a check or money order out to Booster Club. Make it out to IUIC and in the memo, right, for the Booster Club, please. I keep seeing checks saying Booster Club and the bank tellers are saying, this is not an account. Okay, so there's nothing we can do with those checks. All right. The next one is a letter, a short letter. It says, hi, Bishop, how are you and the family? Fine, I hope. We are sending our monthly donation. Thank you, Bishop, for all you do. We love all you you do. We thank God for the most high. We thank God the most. So thank you, Frederick and Rosa. Thank you, Frederick and Rosa. All right, the next letter reads, Shalom, Bishop, most high in Christ. Bless. As always, we send well wishes to you and your family. We continue to send up prayers that all is well. Thank you and the prophets for all you do for the furthering of God's truth. Sincerely and shalom, John, Jean, and Hezekiah. All praise to the Lord. Thank y'all so, so much. All right. Now, let's get to the shout out donations as well. We want to give a shout out to... Hmm. What does this say? It's in script. <laughs> I see a C. I think it says Carmen. I think that's what it says. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, shout out to Brother Nehemiah. Thank you. Shout out to Dushan and John. Dushan and John of Landover, Maryland. Thank you so much. Shout out to Nawet TW. Thank you. Shout out to Rhonda B. Thank you. Shout out to Michael B. Thank you. Shout out to Karen W. Thank you. Shout out to, I think that's an M and H. 
Shout out to James W. Thank you, James. Shout out to Chris K. Chris K again. Thank you so much. Chris K again. Thank you so much. Shout out to Derek DS. Shout out to uh, Isaac and Rebecca. Shout out to Malachi I. Shout out to Sheila K and Jada R. Thank you. Shout out to hmm, Karen L. Thank you. All right, this one has no name on it. Shout out to Sherry H O. Thank you. Shout out to Sherry H O again. Shout out to Yaffa. Thank you, Yaffa. Shout out to Yaffa again. And Yaffa again. All praises to the Lord. Shout out to Albertina and Roosevelt W. Thank you so much. Shout out to Joyce H. Shout out to L. Mosley. Shout out to Sister Brenda. Shout out. All praises. Shout out to Carlton K. All praises. Shout out to Lala. Thank you, Lala. Shout out to Jennifer E. Shout out to Charles L. Shout out to Charles L. again and Charles L. again. Shout out to Jennifer E. All praises. Shout out to Kenneth S. Shout out to Usually Misunderstood. All praises. Shout out to Mary G. Thank you so much. Shout out to Kevin P. Thank you so much. Shout out to Yolanda W. Thank you so much. Shout out to Lala again. Shout out to Edward M. Shout out to Tahila or Tahila. I. Yeah, Teresa, I'm talking about you. This is for Teresa. Hebrew name, it says Tahila. T E H I L A L. Yeah, Israel. All praises, all praises. Shout out to Pamela. I think that's Pamela P. Yes, thank you so much. Shout out to Rose E.D. of Clarksville, Tennessee. Rose E.D. again of Clarksville, Tennessee. Shout out to Jediah. Thank you, Jediah. Shout out to J.V. Tujmal. Thank you so much. All praises. Shout out to Cassandra D.G. of Las Vegas. Shout out to Eureka D. and Brian T. Thank you so much. Shout out to Laura M. Thank you so much. Shout out to Kathy F. of Memphis, Tennessee. Shout out to Elisheba I. All praises. Shout out to Pierre A.D. Of Bronx, New York. All praises. Shout out to Joseph O.C. Of Parma, Ohio. All praises. Shout out to Rosa J. All praises. Shout out to Alice H. Shout out to Stephen B. Of Burlington, North Kakalaka. All right. Shout out to Ilona B. All praises. Shout out to Terry and Doris B. Shout out to little David, all praises. Shout out to Anthony LT. All praises, thank you so much. Shout out to Johnny BD, thank you so much. Shout out to Minnie, thank you, Sister Minnie. Shout out to Lori J. And last but not least, I want to thank all you brothers and sisters for your shout out letters of exhortation, your donations of support. And you know how I love to say, oh, and keep the brothers in prayer that are in Ghana. They have met with an Ashanti king, sent up prayers for them. We're trying to do big things in Israel, Israel, and we will let you know as things develop. Okay, so you know how I love to say, let's all of us keep one another in prayer. Let's stay healthy. Let's stay faithful. Let's stay focused. But most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ bless you all. Love you. Shalom. We used to scream black power. 
while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.